we talked about hypnosis because hypnosis is a way to relax. Remember, we, we did some relaxation exercises trying to go to sleep and we counted backwards from 10 and we thought about being, you know, butter melting in the sun. Well, those relaxation exercises allow us to relax our conscious mind and it kind of makes our subconscious a little bit louder. It makes it possible for us to listen to it. And it allows us to talk to it. So that's what hypnosis is about. It's about helping you access your subconscious mind. Not a bad thing. So people will practice hypnosis or practice meditation, which is very similar to access their subconscious. And the same thing is, is true about how you, and there's a mosquito here. Ah, missed him. Uh, your dad's not scared of mosquitoes because he's immune, but he still can't stand little bastards. Um, so, so, we listened to a lot of music while you were here, didn't we? And in particular, we listened to a lot of guitar. George Harrison, Eric Clapton. Guitar was pretty great. It still is, but it's, it's kind of become secondary in modern music. Uh, but there are a lot of great guitar players, and before you leave here, we're going to listen to some more of them. And we listened to the Beatles, and we talked about how the Beatles were different in the early years and later years. We talked about uh, John Lennon. John Lennon is an asshole. It's not a good word to use, but ultimately true in this case. Uh, and the rest of the Beatles were pretty good, but George Harrison was my favorite because his songs had a lot of depth to them, and uh, he was a person that had a, a lot of thought behind what he was trying to sing. Uh, plus, he was a great guitar player. <laughs> what else do we talk about? We talk about the founding of the U.S. Constitution and our way of government. And we talked about the conflict between the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist. And that really is the, uh, the fundamental disagreement in the U.S. is between these two philosophies. Now, the Federalists believe in a strong central government. The Anti-Federalists uh, believe in a weak central government and they advocate more for individual rights. Now, ultimately, these are both the extremes, and a good government is going to take a little bit from both, right? In some places, it's going to say, well, individual rights are most important. And in others, it's going to say, it's important that we have a coherent central government. It makes sense, doesn't it? Well, that's where, that's where the, the, the conflict comes in in the U.S., and, and that's where you see disagreement over the past, you know, what's it been, 230 years, 240 years? That's where most of our, our political uh, discussions have, have come about. Yeah, I lean a little bit toward uh, the anti-federalists, but I realize that without the federalists, you know, this country just could not exist. So we have a, a balance between these two. And we talked about being able to use hypnosis for yourself to, to teach yourself things. So you, you take something you want. Like for example, uh, a person wants to quit smoking. They would you know, figure out how to say the whole, you know, quit smoking is gonna kill you. Or quit smoking is too expensive or, or whatever. And distill it down to a single picture and, you know, for example, I, I said, maybe a person wants to quit smoking because they want to save money. I said, well, what are you going to do with the money? I said, well, I'm going to buy a new car. What car do you want? Think of what the picture is. So then you go through the steps of hypnosis. You go through the relaxation exercise. And the whole time you're going through that relaxation exercise, you picture what you want. You picture the car. Or maybe, you know, 
if you if you think it's got, smoking's gonna kill you, then you say, okay, every time that I, I go through this, I'm gonna have uh, you know a picture of me being old and happy with my children, or or something like that. Something where you you have a really simple picture because complex pictures means your conscious brain is still working. Your subconscious can be accessed through you know just very simple bursts, simple little pictures. And that's how people do self-hypnosis. And it's a way of, of, of training your brain to do what you want it to do, whether it's be more productive or be you know, less afraid of things or anything. You can always access that. What else did we do? Ah, we talked about metaphor, right? Most of the good songs aren't singing literal, like, you know, the song Rocket Man wasn't about outer space. The song Rocket Man, outer space was a metaphor for you know, being up in space is like being in solitude. And the idea of metaphor is really important for artists because artists use metaphor to talk about uh, deeper feelings. You know, if, if, uh, if Elton John said, you know, he, he sung a song that you know, during the day I feel so lonely, I work alone, no one understands me. It wouldn't be very melodic and it's very narrowly defined because he's talking about work. Instead, he's saying, I feel like a rocket man. And that was it allows the listener to interpret it in their own way. Some people, for example, me, would say, you know, during the day at work I feel isolated and alone and I'm out there doing my own thing. Other people interpret it in terms of uh, what's happening in their life. You know, some people in interpret it in terms of drug use. Some people interpret it uh, in terms of uh, their uh, their identities and and how they felt uh, confined by society and that's what makes metaphor so great is that it turns an artist's idea which could be you know whatever you know for example uh, Many people believe that, that uh, uh, Rocket Man was about drug use. I don't know if that's true or not, but it doesn't really matter because he took his concrete example, made it a metaphor, and then it allowed for all the rest of us to have an enjoyment and an appreciation because whether you really are in outer space or you are working in a mine or you are, you know, working in a courthouse, you can still have the same feeling and that that's what makes metaphor so great <laughs> and the same way uh, Pompeii is not about Pompeii it's about feelings and if you listen to the words and what it's supposed to make you feel that's what it's about and and uh, uh, the, the song uh, Viva La Vida Viva La Vida it's not about uh, a dictator. I mean, it is, but the feelings of that dictator are what it's about. And, and that feeling of, of, uh, of having won the world and then lost it all. So that's the importance of, of uh, metaphor. And it's in poetry and it's in music and uh, even in some of the visual arts as well. Right? So when we talked about fears, for example, uh, remember you were having nightmares about, uh, remember there, there was like uh, a video of some guy squirting ketchup on his face and you said, oh, he squirted ketchup on his face and I thought about his eyes being torn out and I heard them pop and, and whatnot. Well, you know, there was no popping and there was no eyes coming out and there was none of that. It was all in your mind. 
they were all in your subconscious. Your subconscious saw red on someone's face and somehow that went to people's eyes getting popped out. Well, that's all in your head. It's not in real life. And you know it, right? You can look at it and say, huh, yeah, there's no eyes, there's no blood. It's a guy squirting ketchup on his face. So, you get to control how you remember things and you get to control how you feel about things. In the case of, of, of uh, you know, being afraid of eyes, well, you get to say, I'm not scared. Subconscious, you don't have the right to scare me. And you get to take control because anything that happens in your brain, it belongs to you and to you alone. <laughs> we learned about lasagna. This is leftover lasagna from the fridge. Lasagna is basically layered noodles with some meat, some tomatoes, and some cheese-like substance. In my case, I'm using a dairy-free sour cream mixed with egg as my filler, and then a uh, soy cheese on the top. Uh, lasagna can really contain anything. You can put veggies in, you can put meat in, you can put uh, whole tomatoes, to crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, uh, basil leaves. I made it with spinach, I made it with kale. It's all good things and the beauty of it is that in a single pan you can make about 12 servings. Lasagna is fantastic and an easy way to maintain a healthy way of living. I should mention amendments to the Constitution. So we have this Constitution, right? And it was written out and it's all the rules for how government operates. But we can change the Constitution and we have rules for changing it where basically someone will propose, you know, one of our, our Congress people, they'll say, we propose making this change to the Constitution and all the states get together, representatives from all the states get together and they vote. If 75% of the people say, yeah, we want to change this, then we ratified an amendment to the Constitution and it's changed. And it's important that we use this to change the Constitution. And there's discussion nowadays about changes to government that are a little bit, little bit suspect. Right? And people are talking about things like, you know, changing the number of, of uh, justices in the Supreme Court. People are talking about uh, making it illegal to, to burn flags. People are, are talking about uh, getting rid of the Electoral College. And all these things, I think, are reasonable if they're done through a constitutional amendment, because that's how we change our government. But people are talking about making these changes without going through the constitutional amendment because they don't think 75% of the people agree with them. And you know what? They're right. But that's why we live in a republic. We live in a republic because we do have these rules and we do make it really difficult to change the rules because we only change them if it's really important. So. That's how we have a constitutional amendment, and a lot of these amendments are really important. We bought socks. Do you remember that? Because having socks is kind of essential for protecting your feet when you go out. We had problems with socks and bonkers, and uh, when we went climbing, remember? Climbing with bare feet in shoes, you wind up with the cuts in your feet. So something we talked about was why socks are great. Now, thinking of your brain, we talked about stoicism, right? Remember, stoicism was invented. It's a philosophy that was, was uh, first uh, thought about and invented by the Greeks. And the idea is that you can 
only control what's in your power. And the rest you can't control. You just live with it. So a Stoic would be a person that, you know, they think about their job. They think, well, I'm going to lose my job. I say, well, what can I do? Well, I, can, I can work hard, but ultimately I can't really control keeping my job or losing my job, right? Because, you know, if the business runs out of money, that happens. Or, you know, if, if uh, there's a cutback or they move the company to Mexico or, or whatever, I can't control that. So how do we deal with that? Well, we deal with it because a stoic would say, I can only control my own emotions. I can control my own reactions and how I feel about the world. We talked about the amendments to the Constitution. Some of them, not all. So we have this Constitution, right? And uh, it's basically the nuts and bolts of how the government works and how the different branches of the government all work together. And they have checks and balances so no one branch becomes too powerful. And those have gotten a little bit wonky in recent years with the president having wars without actually having war powers and the uh, president uh, having uh, executive uh, capacities to have uh, governmental institutions like uh, uh, the Food and Drug Administration that are essentially making legislation even though uh, that is reserved for the Congress. Uh, but the amendments to the Constitution are important, and in particular the first ten. And these first ten, the creation of this was a compromise between the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. Uh, the Federalists felt that we don't need them, right? Because, well, it's laid out in the Constitution. And the Anti-Federalists said, no, we have to have, you know, some specific rules that the government can't break, right? So we, we put these amendments in. First Amendment is one of the more important ones. There's, there's several that are extremely important. The First Amendment is, is one of those. It says that the government shall not, again, negative liberty, the government shall not uh, prevent you from petitioning the government, complaining to them. It shall not uh, take away your freedom to express yourself and express your beliefs, in particular your political beliefs. Those are the, those are the most important uh, because your political beliefs are the ones that, that uh, impact government. And if you think that there's a law that's unfair, you should have the right to say, hey, this law is unfair. It needs to be changed. If you think the government's behaving uh, tyrannical, if you think that someone in the government broke the Constitution, you need to speak out. In fact, I would even say that it's not a right, but it's a responsibility for you to speak out when someone breaks the Constitution. It says that the government shall not uh, tell you what religion you have to follow or that you have to follow any religion. So it protects the freedom to have or, or not have a religion. It's your own business. It protects your right to express your religion. So, for example, in the U.S., if a person wants to wear uh, a cross or they want to wear a, a head covering or whatever, they want to have a beard or not have a beard, that's their own choice. And the government can't say, no, you, you, can't, you can't wear a head covering if you're working in a public office. In contrast, places like uh, France, you know, they have rules saying, you know, you can't wear a head covering in public office. Say, well... What business is to you if I'm wearing a hat? There isn't any, by the way. So it's important. It says that the government can't stop you from, from gathering with people. You have the right to assemble. And if a bunch of people, they get together and they say, you know, we're going to march because we don't believe in this or we do believe in this or, or whatever, right? You're allowed to get together and talk with people that you share common beliefs. And this First Amendment to the Constitution is really important because it says that you 
can talk about the government. And some of the crazy things is that you're allowed to come and say how much you hate the government. So people get together and they say, I hate America. And you say, well, okay. You know, I don't agree with them. I love America. And there's my alarm. Dismiss that. I love America, but what I love about America is that you can say how much you hate it. <laughs> right? So that's why, for example, people are allowed to burn the American flag. That's right. You say, I don't like America. I'm going to go out and I'm going to set the flag on fire. Or, you know, you've got a copy of the Constitution. You can go out in the street. You can burn a copy of the Constitution. Now, you can't burn them in airports. You can't burn them, you know, on the White House lawn. Uh, places that there's public safety. You know, that's, that's different, right? You, you have a gargantuan flag that you fill a movie theater with and you light it on fire and kill everyone. You're not allowed to do that. But you are allowed to have a public protest where you burn a flag. And that should go for all flags. And that's a modern issue where some flags in this country have become protected. And I think that that's a bit of a questionable situation. But uh, that's another topic for another time. Uh, so the First Amendment to the Constitution is, is critical for its uh, survival. And we talked about this. We talked about the bathtub and why people whistle and sing in the bathtub. Because the acoustics make it sound good. Not in recordings. This recording is probably crappy. But when you're just sitting there and you're singing, it sounds good. And the reason is because you have all these walls that allow for echoes. And when you're singing in this big echoey chamber, uh, it lets your brain cover up your mistakes. In a recording studio, when they're recording uh, video or, or audio, they have these baffles on the wall. And when you, you know, sing at the wall, oh, it goes to the wall and it gets scattered and it doesn't bounce back, which means that when you sing into the microphone, you only get the sound from your mouth, which is very, very unforgiving. It's unforgiving because what comes out is what's recorded in the bathtub. Now, if you're recording it, you're going to get this big airy sound. It's not good for a recording, but if you're belting out eight days a week, it sounds pretty good. So that's why, that's why we sing in the bathtub. We talked about the importance in believing in yourself. Now, believing in yourself is uh, important because it's necessary to succeed. For example, you're climbing that rock wall. Every time you come down and say, I'll never climb to the top. Well, that means you're never going to climb to the top. Now, it's necessary to believe in yourself, but it's not sufficient to believe in yourself. What do I mean? I mean, if you don't believe that you can climb that wall, you uh, never will. But just because you believe you're going to climb the wall doesn't mean you will. Because if you don't practice, and you don't build your muscles, and you don't think about where you're putting your feet, because remember, climbing is about feet. You use your feet to push yourself up, you use your hands to balance yourself. Important. But if you don't use your brain, and you don't use your skills to become a good athlete, you can't climb the wall either. So you need both. You need hard work for anything in your life, whether it's you know academics or music or dance and you also have to believe in yourself it's also important that the wall you're climbing it doesn't really care about your feelings I mean you come down you cry it hurts your feelings you know, no one cares I mean the people around you care the wall doesn't care about your feelings it only cares about are you able to put your hands and feet in the right place and do you have the muscles to push yourself up so it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, in part, the believing in yourself is about you having the power to push yourself up. And having the physical strength to push yourself up is about overcoming the wall. But you have to have both. <laughs> so, the world.
really doesn't care about your feelings much. Uh, the world's all about these facts, like if you believe you can jump off the roof and fly, you're not going to, because <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh, but if you want to fly and you believe in yourself, you can find ways, for example, with uh, flight suits or hang gliding or whatever, where you can get close to that. So you got to believe in yourself because that's important for who you are on the inside. And you've got to work hard and be an intelligent person to actually achieve and overcome the obstacles in real life.